Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel Doctor's Corner. In this today's lecture, we are going to discuss about sarcotubular system. Okay? What exactly is the sarcotubular system and basically it is uh, a very important structure in the muscle physiology to understand the muscle contraction. So before in hand in this uh, short video of around 10 minutes, we are going to discuss about this uh, sarcotubular system in the succeeding next videos. We will discuss about the molecular basis of muscle contraction, how the action potential reaches from the neuromuscular junction to the muscle cell and how exactly a muscle cell will contract, right? So we'll make a series of lectures on this muscle nerve muscle physiology. So right now in this particular video, consider this as a muscle cell, okay, as a muscle cell and as you are well aware that this outer layer it is called as sarcolemma it is the cell membrane the cell membrane so called is normally they are called as sarcolemma okay we are speaking about the skeletal muscle here sarcolemma okay so in this uh, we'll come to this topic what is sarcotubular system before that i'll give a background so this cell membrane throughout this cell membrane there is invagination of this cell membrane that is invagination of the sarcolemma scene so this invagination of the sarcolemma is termed as T tubules. Okay, what it is termed as T tubules. So it is termed as T tubules or transverse tubules. Okay, T or transverse tubule. Typically, it looks like say T or the transverse tubules. Okay. So throughout the cell membrane of the skeletal muscle, there are depression or invaginations like this. It is known as T tubules. Right now. By naturally, the fluid inside this will be ECF, okay? That is known as the extracellular fluid, right? Also, uh, in the cell membrane, you know, there is other cellular organelles like a, a nucleus and other myofibrils and all, etc., etc. So, as you know, that there are myofibrils and that myofilaments, thick and thin filaments will be there, okay? A band and I band. In the last lecture, we have discussed about this thick filament as well as the thin filament. So typically, uh, typically this uh, invagination of the T tubules, invagination of the T tubules will be at the junction of the A and I band. Okay, where the A and I band junction is there, there only there will be the invagination of this T tubules, right? So there will be myofibrils. Now, inside this sarcoplasm or the cell inside this skeletal muscle cell, there are other cellular organelles. One of the very important cellular organelles is endoplasmic reticulum so the endoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cell it is called as sarcoplasmic reticulum or it is known as sarcoplasmic reticulum okay now this sarcoplasmic reticulum the terminal end of this okay it is known as terminal cisternae it is bit dilated it is known as terminal cisternae so now speciality of this uh, cells or the sarcoplasmic reticulum is it will be dilated near the T tubules that is the terminal uh, in the form terminal cisterne. So now this structure what you are seeing here okay sarcoplasmic reticulum terminal cisterne and the T tubules. This sarcoplasmic reticulum is also known as L tubules or the longitudinal tubules okay because they run parallelly with the muscle cell fibers or myofibrils. So it is known as longitudinal tubules. This is known as transverse tubules. So you, basically T tubules and L tubules. So you can see there is a triad here. Triad means three structures together. The one end of, of the L tubules that is the sarcoplasmic reticulum, then the T tubule and another side uh, L tubule terminal cisterne. Triad here, there will be one more triad here. So this triad what it is known as it is nothing but the sarcotubular system that is our today's topic so what does the sarcotubular system consist of so basically as you can make out sarcotubular system so basically it's a system made up of tubules so mainly made up of two tubules g tubules or l tubules t tubules are transverse tubules formed by the imagination of this sarcolemma right it is due to the cell membrane sarcolemma and this l tubules or the longitudinal tubules is formed by the terminal ends okay majorly this terminal sister name this structure longitudinal tubules okay this it is made up of this uh, uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum so two structures sarcoplasmic reticulum that is endoplasmic reticulum of the skeletal muscle and the uh, cell membrane 
T tubules. Okay, this form a triad. So this structure it is known as sarcotubular system. Now what's the importance? Why we are highlighting this particular structure, sarcotubular system, in the muscle physiology? Because for the muscle myofilaments or myofibrils to contract for the normal functioning of the skeletal muscle, one of the most important chemical or ion is the calcium. Which is stored here in this sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now it has to release into the intracellular fluid or the cytoplasm of the muscle cell. Then only the myofibrils can contract. So calcium ions are stored here. So there is a mechanism how these calcium ions are released whenever there is an action potential reaches on the cell membrane. Okay. So when the action potential reaches the cell membrane, it gives signals to the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release the calcium. So this release of the calcium by the action potential reaches the cell membrane. Okay. Now this typical this process is known as excitation contraction coupling. Excitation contraction coupling. Excitation contraction coupling. We'll discuss about this topic in the next uh, videos also. What is exactly excitation contraction coupling? So basically, excitation contraction coupling means the process of muscle contraction. Excitation means the spread of action potential. So this action potential will lead to the muscle contraction. So these two process has to be coupled and it is coupled by this calcium release okay by the sarcotubular system now how exactly this calcium will release from this sarcoplasmic uh, uh, reticulum there is a mechanism on this t tubule there are voltage sensitive receptors known as dhp receptors okay what they are known as dhp receptor or dihydropyridine receptors they are voltage sensitive so they will be activated only when there is a change in the membrane potential or when there is an action potential reaches here okay now similarly on this uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum there are calcium channels okay there are calcium channels present okay there are calcium channels present and this uh, calcium channels which are present they are known as ryanodine receptors okay ryanodine receptors they are calcium channels basically and they are mechanically connected to this dihydropyridine receptor. So remember, dihydropyridine receptor, DHP receptors are the voltage sensitive receptors which are present in the T tubules. Whereas, ryanodine receptors are the calcium channels which are present on the um, sarcoplasmic reticulum membrane and both are interlinked mechanically. Okay, so I'll enlarge this diagram so that the concept will be clear. So consider this as a terminal system. On this terminal system, there are receptors what receptors are present here these receptors are known as ryanodine receptor the name is given because they uh, they can be stimulated or operated by the alkaloid known as ryanodine okay so ryanodine receptors they are basically calcium channels okay so what is the function of these receptors so they will keep this uh, make this calcium which is present inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum to remain here only so it will it's like an opener so it will stop it so whenever it will open the calcium will come out so now you know that in the t tubules in the t tubules that is which is formed by the sarcolemma okay so we have which receptors yes DHP or dihydropyridine receptors which are interconnected or mechanically connected to the ryanodine receptors okay so now whenever there is an action potential action potential which is the cell membrane and which is the T tubule then this receptors gets activated dihydropyridine receptors now because when they get activated and these are mechanically interconnected with ryanodine receptors so they will pull this ryanodine receptors out so what exactly will happen is they will pull this ryanodine receptors uh, out so whenever they pull this ryanodine receptors out so what will happen is this will open this calcium channels will open and uh, this calcium channels will be opened okay so these are connected to the dihydropyridine receptors okay so this calcium channels are open and the calcium from inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum will now enter inside the ICF okay so calcium which was stored here will now enter into the intracellular fluid compartment okay because of this there is increase in the calcium level so uh, this this is known as calcium pulse that is the release of the calcium calcium pulse so this is very much important for the normal muscle contraction 
the calcium has to release from the cytoplasmic reticulum which is stored so generally it is less than 10 minus to minus 7 mole per liter okay calcium level in the uh, ICF that is in the sarcoplasm but when this action potential reaches here and all this mechanism takes place and this randy receptor opens the calcium from this center here okay so this calcium which enters here it will be like more than 500 times it will be around 10 raise to 10 2 in, uh, 2 into 10 raise to minus 5 moles per liter the concentration will increase from this to this that is more than 500 times which is actually 10 times more what is actually required for the muscle contraction okay so this is all about the sarcotubular system just to summarize sarcotubular system is the uh, system formed by the uh, transverse tubules and the uh, longitudinal tubules so tube tubules is nothing but the invagination of the sarcolemma and the longitudinal tubules is nothing but the term this one it is formed by the sarcoplasmic reticulum so they form a trial at the junction of the a and i band of the myofibrils okay hope this video is informative and uh, useful for you if you like this video please subscribe and share it with your friends we will be making the similar type of videos from all the subjects of the mbbs uh, frequently in our channel doctor's corner thank you take care have a nice day